Indusaw is India's one of the largest manufacturing company in educational science lab equipments. It has a wide range of equipment for making science learning fun. We present here an experiment suitable for trading in experimental physics, which illustrates a novel technique of plotting the equipotential curves for various geometries of electrodes. At first, we will look into the items provided with this experimental setup. The first item is an acrylic trough. Second item is a digital multimeter. We need a power supply unit which is provided with the power cord. The other items which are provided with this experimental kits are one pair of disc electrodes, one metal ring, one plastic boss head, one cylindrical base, one pair of bar electrodes, one rod with socket, one stand rod, and one needle probe. There will be two pair of red and black LEDs of length 100 cm. Graph sheets and instruction manual are also provided. Electric field is a physical entity which fills the space around the charge within which its influence can be felt by the very small test charge. It is a vector quantity. Electric field intensity at a point is defined as the electrical force experienced by a unit positive charge at that point. Electric field line is the path followed by unit positive charge in the electric field. The tangent to the electric field line at the point gives the direction of field at that point. Electric potential at a point is defined as the amount of work done in bringing in a unit positive charge from infinity to that point. Equipotential surface is the locus of all points which are at same potential. Some of the characteristics of equipotential surface are the equipotential surfaces never intersect each other because if they intersect, then there will be two different directions of electric fields at that point. Work done in traversing a unit positive charge along a curve on the equipotential surface is zero. Electric field is always perpendicular to the equipotential surface. In the first experiment, we will draw equipotential lines between two oppositely charged bar electrode. These are the items required to perform the first experiment. Acrylic trough, digital multimeter, cylindrical base, plastic boss head, rod with socket, needle probe, pluglets, bar electrodes, graph sheets, power supply, along with power cord and metal ring. Now we will look into how the experiment will be performed step by step. In the first step, Place a bar electrode on one graph paper and mark its position with a pencil, as shown. In the second step, place the other bar electrode at some distance from the first bar electrode and also mark its position. In our case, the end-to-end -end distance between the two electrodes should be about 16 cm. Now create a replica of the positions of the bar electrodes on an another graph paper. The two graph papers are now identical. Then, place one of the graph papers on the table and put the acrylic trough on it. Keep the another graph paper with you for your reference. After that, place the two bar electrodes above the trough on their marked positions. In the next step, Plug the power cord into socket at the back of the power supply unit. Plug the other end of the power cord into a grounded socket. Thereafter, connect the two bar electrodes across the DC output of the power supply unit by means of the red and black LEDs, each of length 100 cm. While doing this, please ensure that the bar electrodes are not displaced from their marked position. If happens so, set them to their initial position. Now, mount the stand rod into the cylindrical base, as shown. Then, mount the plastic boss head near the top of the stand rod, as shown. After that, insert the rod with socket into the another hole of the plastic boss head, as shown. Now mount the needle probe into the hole situated at the end of the rod with socket, as below, Thereafter, take one red lead of length 100 cm and insert its one end 
into the volt ohm milliampere port of the digital multimeter. Next, insert the other end of the red LED into the socket of the rod with socket, as shown. Now position the cylindrical base stand rod plastic dosh head rod with socket needle probe arrangement so that the bottom tip of the needle probe lies in between the two bar electrodes. In the next step, insert black lead of length 100 cm between the common port of the digital multimeter and the negative terminal of the DC output of the power supply unit. Then, Fill the acrylic trough with water such that the two bar electrodes are half dipped. After that, place the needle probe arrangement so that the tip of the needle probe just touches the water surface at a distance 2 cm from the midpoint of the inside edge of the positive electrode. For this, change the position of the plastic boss head over the stand rod. Now switch on the power supply. The power switch button will glow green. Rotate the voltage adjusting knob and set it to the 6 volt position. Thereafter, rotate the knob of the digital multimeter to the 200 volt indicator of the voltage measuring region. Note down the value shown in the digital multimeter. In this case, it is 8.8 .8 volt. Now in the graph sheet, locate and mark the point for which the voltage is 8.8 .8 volt. Enclose this point with a circle. Now locate some more points at same potential, that is 8.8 .8 volt, by placing the tip of the needle probe at different position on the water surface. Mark those points in the reference graph sheet. If we join all those points by a continuous line, then the potential at each and every point on that line will be same that is 8.8 .8 volt. This continuous line would then be called as equipotential line. Similarly find the equipotential points on lines in a different region, as shown. Join these equipotential points by a continuous line. The equipotential lines will be obtained as shown. Place the metal ring in the midway between the two electrodes. The center of the ring should coincide with the center of the area lying between the two electrodes. Determine the potentials and find the equipotential points set different distances from the electrodes in this case also. Also check the potential at some points which lie inside the metal ring. The equipotential lines in this case will appear as shown. Compare these equipotential lines with the previous case. Equipotential lines for infinite long plate electrodes will be straight line parallel to the electrodes. The equipotential curve for plate electrodes of finite length get curved near the end. Insertion of metal ring causes the bending of equipotential lines in its vicinity. The bending of equipotential lines occurs away from the metal ring. The potential is constant inside the metal ring. In the second experiment, we will draw equipotential lines between oppositely charged disk electrode. These are the items required to perform the second experiment. Acrylic trough, digital multimeter, cylindrical base, plastic boss head, rod with socket, needle probe, pluglets, disk electrodes, graph sheets, and power supply, along with power cord. Arrange the items as before, but, this time use disk electrodes, instead of bar electrodes. Similarly draw the equipotential lines in this case as well. The equipotential lines can also be drawn by applying AC potential, at the electrodes. In fact, here AC is preferred to DC, because DC will dissociate the electrolyte, in this case, water which will result in polarization of charged ions in the electrolyte. This polarization will change the potential distribution in the water over time, and hence will contribute to the error in measurement. Insert the probe exactly vertical in the water. Due to the refraction at water surface, the determination of the exact location of the equipotential points becomes difficult. However, the source of error can be minimized by looking perpendicular to the water surface. Thank you for your patience.
Please stay with us at www.indoswetu.com.